Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we're working on a whip and chat. And that is work in progress is what whip stands for. Um, we are doing the DP along with Rachel Ray. And all you have to do to participate is to work on a, a canvas that represents one of the pride flags. We're doing this in honor of Pride Month and uh, summer. So uh, we're spending the summer up until August 31st working on these canvases. You guys, it has been a weekend. So first things first, we're going to talk about uh, my little Minna Minna. So for those of you who are new to the channel, hey, I miss coffee. Um, I have three children. Uh, my oldest being Minna. Now, I don't talk about Minna as much as I do the other two children because Minna does not live with me. Uh, she lives with her father and her grandmother back in Pennsylvania. Uh, she decided when we moved to North Dakota that she wanted to stay with her grandmother because her grandmother had le recently been widowed and she didn't want her grandmother to be lonely. So she decided to stay with her grandmother, which I, of course, was happy to oblige her. And she usually comes up in the summer to visit. Uh, this summer, Minna will not be coming up to visit because she has chosen to go to summer camp, which is fine. Uh, she goes. She usually would go to summer camp every year. The only reason she didn't the last couple of years is because she came here. And obviously because of the virus going around, the whole panorama kind of messed up her plan. So she came to visit. But she asked, and she hasn't been in two years, if it would be okay if she went this year. So we, of course, told her yes, even though we're cry we're quietly crying inside. Um, we miss her, so it's kind of hard to make that decision to let her go off and do summer camp. But I understand. She's 15. Well, she's 15 today. Um, so let's talk about Minna and my pregnancy with Minna and stuff. So I had a very fairly normal pregnancy with Minna. It wasn't anything like spectacular. Nothing major happened. I didn't get sick or anything. Like I would like watch a baby story as if like it was God's word. Like I would be religiously watching this show thinking that this is exactly how my pregnancy was going to go. When in fact that, you know, when you watch shows on TV like that, these are obviously somebody else's experiences. They're not necessarily going to be your own. I was nervous and scared about my first child because uh, I never wanted children. Um, I was kind of a selfish person, and that's not to say people who don't have children are selfish. I myself was selfish, and I just didn't want children. I was like, there's nothing about having children that's appeasing to me. Like, I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to have to change somebody's diaper or anything like that. And then I found out I was pregnant with Minna, and it was like, the best thing I could do with my life is be a mother. <laughs> I don't know why, um... I, I had a sudden change of heart. Obviously, it could have just been because I was pregnant and full of emotions and the hormones got a hold of me. But then, like, after I got pregnant with men, I was like, I want more children. <laughs> like, I have barely been pregnant with men and I was already, like, planning next my next child. Um, but, yeah, so I got pregnant with men when I was, uh, I think I was 19 when I found out, I think. Or is I was either 19 or just turned 20. I can't remember. Um, but I remember running to her dad's job because he didn't work far from our our house. I remember running to his job and telling him, and he was just like, "Are you are you are you serious?" <laughs> uh, this was our first child for both him and I, so we were both kind of in shock. And of course, I made a doctor's appointment right away to go get an ultrasound, and they were like, "Yeah, actually, actually." you're about four months pregnant. And I was like, say word. Um, so I was able to find out immediately that she was a girl. And I told Minna's dad that we, we had made a game plan that if it was a girl, that he got to name her because I wanted a little boy. I don't know why I wanted a little boy. I just really wanted a little boy. And But if it was a girl, he got to name her. If it was a boy, I got to name him. I don't know what I would have, I don't remember what the name was. I want to say I was going to name him Xavier. Um, I really liked X-Men, okay? <laughs> um, but she turned out to be a girl, so, you know, fair is fair. So I was like, I, I let her father name her, and he goes, if you, you know, I remember sitting down to dinner with him one night, and he goes, if you could name her, what would you name her? And the first thought that came to my head, and I tell her this all the time, it drives her insane, her name should have been, Emily Elizabeth after the little girl from Clifford. Clifford was one of my favorite cartoons growing up, one of my favorite books to listen to. 
and I wanted my daughter to be named after Emily Elizabeth from Clifford. She was a little girl that took care of Clifford. And Minna's father was just like, uh, nay, nay, let's compromise. So he let me keep her middle name and because I didn't realize it at the time, but that's a family middle name. So like his grandmother, his mother, his sister all have the same middle name, which was Elizabeth. So I was like, all right, we can keep Elizabeth. What was her first name going to be? And he was like, Minna. And I was like, M Minna? And he's like, Minna. And I was like, what is that? Now, Minna's dad was, uh, he probably still is, r heavily into like Dungeons and Dragons. He reads the books and like all the things. And so he, one of the characters in a book was a warrior princess named Minna. But he wanted to spell it differently than it was in a book, if I remember correctly. Um, he wanted to spell it to look like Nina but it's Minna. So her name is spelled M-I-N-A, but you pronounce it Minna. Uh, kind of like the fish, minnow, but with an uh. Because <laughs> I remember the first time I told my parents, my dad looked me straight in my face and went, you're naming my granddaughter after a freaking fish? And I'm like, what? At the time, I didn't realize that the name was so close to the fish. And he's like, Minnow? I was like, no, her name is Minna. He's like, I'm not, I'm not calling her Minna. And I'm like, you will if you want to talk to her. Like, that's going to be her name. You can't just rename the kid because it has a name you don't like. Like, I didn't have the best relationship with my parents when I was uh, pregnant with Minna. <laughs> so, like, my parents are just like, yeah, no, we're, we're, not we're not calling her Minna. Which, of course, upset Minna's dad because, you know, that was the name he picked. He really liked that name. And I was just like, well, unfortunately for you, it's not your kid. So her name will be Minna. Sure enough, I had Minna. Pregnancy was a breeze. Like, I had no issues. I didn't start showing that I was pregnant until I was about eight months pregnant. So, by the time I was eight months pregnant, it was I was one of those, like, uh, people that, from the back, I didn't look pregnant at all. But from the front, I was all belly. Like, I was a stick figure that looked like her insides had blown a bubble. Like, I was skinny when I had Minna, and I was, like, like super super small whenever I had Minna and but whenever I turned around it looked like I had swallowed a beach ball so uh we went to preg uh we went to a child care class because we wanted to we neither one of us have had children before I had nieces and nephews but uh Minna's dad uh had never had children his family at the point at that point didn't have any kids in it so he never really besides like his parents teaching and his mom doing Sunday school He'd never had real interactions with a kid before, so he was just kind of like, uh... <laughs> Alright, hold on. This drill's on the wrong symbol. Come on. Come, come, come Oh, Here. There we go. So, it was kind of one of those things where we decided we were going to go to childhood class, and it was funny because I felt some type of way when we went there because... Everybody had their big old round pregnant bellies and had hard times getting around and everything, and here I am... I'm at like, I don't know, I think I was like 135 pounds. And take it, I was 6'1". So for me, that's nothing. Like I looked like a, a bean pole. My target weight that I should be for my size, or that they, the BMI chart claims that I should be, is 184 pounds. And I was 130. I was a model, so I was uh, super thin all the time up until I got pregnant. And so I walk in 135 pounds at pregnancy class at six months pregnant and everybody's kind of looking at me like, why are they here? And the lady had everybody go around, tell us, you know, your names, how, you know, what, what level of pregnancy are you? And when I said six months, everybody kind of looked at me and they're like, what the hell? And I was like, it's our first child. And they're like, oh, well, sometimes with your first kid, you don't necessarily show right away. By the end of class, I had grown a beach ball. <laughs> Like, it had literally, like, I, I swear, I woke up one day and I just had a beach ball belly. And so I didn't get to walk around with the beach ball belly too long. So, like, I was pregnant at the beginning of summer. It it was hot. Look, it was hot. We had moved because um, we wanted to be closer to uh, Minna's grandparents or her dad's parents. We wanted to be closer to them because they were going to be able to help us out with uh, taking care of Minna and watching her while we both got jobs and everything like that, which uh, Minna's dad already had a job. He just transferred to where his, you know, where we were living at in Pennsylvania because his parents were closer and they were able to help. Um, my parents both worked 
And so we had decided that we were just going to move closer to his parents, which were about an hour away. So they're like, he's like, you know, we can still visit your parents, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't mind moving away from my parents. Um, I, de- I felt like I depended too much on my parents. And I thought that getting away, you know, moving a, moving a little bit away would help me become more independent. And it did. Um, I don't regret my decision. Uh because I did heavily rely on them for everything and I really wanted to become more independent upon myself and not necessarily somebody else. Uh, so we moved and uh, I think it was five days after we moved, I actually gave birth to Minna. Um, Minna was nine pounds, 1.1 ounces, 20, I think she was 19 inches long. Um, really, really healthy baby. Uh, she was full term. Now, I did go into labor twice before I actually had Minna. So I went into labor on June 6th, and the doctors were like, it's too early. We're going to stop the contractions, and you can come back in a couple of weeks. And I was like, that's fine. I don't want her to come out too early. Well, then I went back into labor 20 days later because I remember telling Minna's dad that I, I remember waking up that morning and telling Minna's dad something didn't feel right. I felt off, and he's like, well, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. My my stomach feels a little bit tighter. All right, sorry about that. Little magpie came in to ask a question. But I noticed my stomach had gotten a little tighter, and I just, I felt off. Well, we ended up going to the hospital that night, and the doctors were just kind of like, you know, yeah, you need to rest. Um, It's a little too early. And at one point, my doctor was like, do you want to have it now? Because, you know, even though it's a little early, you can still have her now. And and I'm like, "Uh, no. The reason I didn't want to have her that time is because her birthday would have been seven six or it would have been six six six, which her dad's a huge heavy metal fan. Which my love of metal came from Minna's dad. He introduced me to heavy metal, and I've been in love with metal ever since. So, uh, I was just kind of like, no, I don't. I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of her birthday being six 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 plus uh, the negative indication of that date and that number because everybody and their mom even now i have people that will ask me if i worship satan for some reason because i like the number 666 what they don't realize is one i am colorblind um so to me where 666 to you guys is a bright bright red to me uh it's kind of like a very pale pink and so it looks really off to me than it does to you guys and it wasn't until i watched uh, Stitcherista, when I first started diamond painting, I watched Stitcherista, and she was talking about how she went into the store to pick up some floss for a project she was working on, and she fell in love with the number 666 uh, DMC floss, and I, when she showed the floss, I was like, that's such a pretty color. Now, because I see things differently, when she said bright red, I was like, that's not, that's not red. And then I have to remind myself, oh, that's right. You see things differently than everybody else. So it is probably red. You probably just see it as something else. Anywho, so I didn't want her to have the birthday 666. So I was like, yeah, no, we're going to hold off for a while. We're not going to, you know, have her today. So then I went into labor again on June 26th. And they were like, we're going to stop it this time. Uh, we want her to get a little bit bigger before. Now, I didn't know what she was measuring at. I, I don't remember what they said she was measuring at at that time, but they they just said they wanted her to get a little bit bigger. If I would have known that she was going to be nine pounds, look, listen, take her, Jesus, take the wheel, take her out. Um, because this was my first birth and I didn't know what to expect. I heard that it hurt and I have a high pain tolerance. I'm talking about extremely high pain tolerance for most things, not for getting shots. I hate getting shots. For, so for those that ask, no. I don't like getting shots. I did not get an epidural with any of my children. No kind of help medication wise because I didn't want to get a shot. So I did my birth naturally. Plus uh, my parents kind of had this thing that uh, if you didn't, if you didn't do drugs when you conceived the baby, uh, you don't have drugs whenever you have the baby. And where I have full you know, carte blanche over my body and how I do things, I still held that to heart where I didn't want to essentially, I I didn't want to get medication for giving birth. Kudos to those people that do get it, but look, listen, I'm not built like that. I'm built like a Ford, not like a Chevy. Um, So like, I didn't want to get the medication because I was scared it was gonna hurt. 
and boy did I not realize how much childbirth hurts. And I remember like mid contraction having Minna, I looked at her dad and I was like, what kind of crazy person does this more than once? Oh my God. Like I, I, I was, I was in pain y'all. Look, I was in pain. So we're sitting there on July. We went in, for, I will, I went in for an appointment because I had to drive to Harrisburg to take and go to my doctor's appointment because we had just literally moved, but I had a doctor's appointment. I hadn't had time to switch my doctor over to Lewistown yet where we were living. Dave, uh, Minna's dad, still worked in Harrisburg at the time. And so, like, I rode up, like, I think his parents actually drove me to my doctor's appointment. I want to say his parents drove me to the doctor's appointment, I think. Either they did or I drove myself. I can't remember. Either way. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I drove myself because they took me to my checkup appointment. So... I drove myself to the doctor's appointment in Harrisburg and I go in and they're like, let's do the ultrasound. I, I lay down, it was just like a normal ultrasound. They were just checking to see how healthy the baby was. And then the next thing I know, the lady's face drops and I'm just like, uh, is, there, is there something wrong? And she's like, hold up, I have to go get the doctor. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm thinking the worst. My baby died, something's up. I don't know what's going on. The doctor comes back, he looks at the ultrasound. He goes, okay, uh, at the time my last name was Harris. My maiden name is Harris. So they were like, you know, okay, Miss Harris, uh, we're going to have to take you and let you have this baby today. And I was like, I'm sorry, say what? I had nothing prepared. Like, I didn't have a bag or anything because I was expecting just to go in for a normal appointment. Because at this point, I was 41 weeks pregnant. I don't know why I didn't take my bag with me. I just didn't take it. Look, pregnancy brain. We're going to blame it on the pregnancy brain. So I was just like, what do you, what do you mean we're having it today? Her dad's not here. Like, you know. I, I can't have this baby today. And they're like, well, unfortunately, now we can't stop it anymore. One, pla you're past your 40 weeks. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, two, you're leaking fluid. And I was like, I didn't know what that meant. Like immediately my brain, because y'all know Miss Coffee's not the smartest crown in the, 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 or the sharpest crown in the box, not the sharpest tool in the shed. When they said I was leaking fluid, I started thinking about car parts and like how cars leak fluid. And I'm like, well, can't you stop it? And they're like, uh, no, that's not how this works. That essentially means your water is trying to break. And I was like, oh. And our biggest fear at that time was my water breaking while I was in bed. So we bought like this really uncomfortable mattress pad to put in the bed because I thought for sure I was going to be asleep when my water broke. Um, and they're like, yeah, essentially your water is trying to break and it just hasn't broken completely. It's just, it has enough of a hole in it that the water, your fluid levels are low. We need to get the baby out. And I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, can I just give natural birth to her? Are y'all going to have to take her? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. We're just going to uh, admit you into the hospital because more than likely your water will break here within the next few hours. And I was like, oh, well, good timing on this doctor's appointment. So they took me over to the emergency area and they put me in maternity, the maternity ward and uh, got me hooked up to everything. They called Minna's dad. And had him come up and he comes up and he's like a nervous wreck. <laughs> and he's like, did you have her? And like he walks in, did you have her? I'm like, uh, no, I'm just sitting here waiting. I don't know how long we waited. I don't think it was too long. I, I just, the, doc, the nurse comes in and I was like, okay, I'm really hungry. Can I get something to eat? And she's like, no, I'm sorry. Say what? Look, listen, again, first child, not realizing you can't eat anything. By the time, like after she told me I couldn't eat. I was like, look, listen, it's been two hours. And I remember it being two hours because I remember saying, if that lady doesn't bring me something to eat, I'm going to eat her the next time she comes. I will turn to cannibalism if that's what it takes. I am starving. I hadn't eaten breakfast that day. I have a bad habit of not eating when I should. And I hadn't had a breakfast that day. Okay, sorry about that. I had to get some more black. Um, so yeah, so I hadn't eaten breakfast that day because I thought I was going to get something to eat right after I got back. So I hadn't eaten since uh, dinner the night before. So I was starving, okay? Like I was ready to convert to cannibalism. I didn't care at this point. I was just hungry and nobody was trying to give me food. Luckily, Minna's dad was very sweet and I believe he snuck me in like a pack of crackers. Look, I've never been so happy to see a pack of crackers in my entire life. They were just like regular saltine crackers and I didn't even care. I, I messed those crackers up. I was so hungry. And I was like, why wouldn't you give somebody something to eat? And she's like, well, because if we end up having to take and do surgery, we don't want you to get sick and it go back up into, you know, the whatever. I'm like, why would you have to do surgery? Well, if the baby doesn't come, like this nurse was not, she had no bedside manner at all. She was just blurting out things. And I was like, are you new? Like, 
why would you t like I, at this point i'm freaked out because this lady just told me that if i g have food i'm gonna like get sick and it's gonna go in with the baby and then they're gonna have to go in and suction it all out or something i just remember it being like something really crazy and i'm like what the hell well then after about two hours i sat there starving i had my saltine crackers that i was hiding under my blanket and i would take a little nibble of it and I'm like, mm -hmm. and so then i was like okay i have to go to the bathroom because they told me her, they told me I could have ice chips. Now, before this, I'd never eaten ice chips before. Like, I, I didn't, cr well, I crunched on ice, but not like, like I do now. Like, now I crunch on ice like it's my job. Like, it's a full-time job, and I'm trying to go for employee of the month, okay? So, they're like, she can have ice chips, but she can't have anything else. And I was like, okay, well, after six cups of ice chips, because for some reason in my head, if I eat enough ice chips, it'll fill me up, Okay. After the ice chips, I'm like, obviously, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. Um, could you, like, you know, do something with my machine? Because I have to go to the bathroom. And she goes, oh, you can't move. I'm sorry. Say what? You can't move. I'm like, uh, I am nine months pregnant, and you're telling me I can't go to the bathroom? And she goes, we can get you a, a – they were trying to get me a mattress or pad or a pad for the bed that I can go to the bathroom. And I'm like – she's like, or we can get you a bedpan. Okay. I'm like, could you get me both, please? And she's like, okay. I'm sitting there, I, and she leaves the room, and I looked at Minna's dad, and I was like, look, listen, I'm not peeing in this bed, okay? Help me up. <laughs> and he's like, well, she said, I said, help me up. <laughs> so, like, he gets up, and he helps me up, and I go to the bathroom. And the nurse lady, I guess it took her a while, because it, it, it's, it, for some reason, that hospital is not the best. So it takes them a while to do anything. Sorry, I have, like, a little black piece of whatever in my pen but it took her forever to go find this bedpan and this mattress thing okay so i was able to get up out of bed with assistance from minna's dad and go over to the bathroom go over to the bathroom i use the bathroom i'm like something feels weird like it's all swollen down there and minna's dad goes what do you mean it's swollen down there i come out of the bathroom and he starts yelling and i'm like what the hell is your problem he goes head 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 i'm like head what the f i look down I'm not even joking you. Um, I had been crowning, apparently. Didn't realize it. And when I went to go use the bathroom, which I only went to go pee, but when I came out of the bathroom, I had Minna's head sitting there. So, of course, I start to freak out because, one, I'm extra, and, two, this is my first child. I don't know what the hell is going on. I didn't think that just going to the bathroom and peeing would cause your baby's head to pop out. Well... The nurses must have heard us screaming, and they come rushing in, and they're like, what's wrong? And I'm like, baby, 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 baby. And she's like, what? And she looks down. She's like, oh, my God. So, like, the nurses come over and help me get back onto the bed so that I don't, you know, snap my daughter's neck. And they call for the doctor, which, you know, he slow as molasses on a paper plate in a snowstorm. So he comes he, – he literally, just gingerly comes walking in. So I see you, uh, uh – I see you giving birth. Uh, you, you think? Nah, I'm over here planning a birthday party. What do you think, Doc? Get your stuff on. Let's go. Y'all, look, listen. They made me sit with her head sticking out like that for a good... It felt like forever, but I think it was only like five minutes. And then they were like, okay, one good push and she's out. One good push, boom, there was Minna. Uh, <laughs> Minna, uh, again, she weighed nine pounds, 1.1 ounces. I want to say she was 19 inches long. I could be mistaken. She could have been 21. She might have been the baby that was 21 inches long. One of the kids was 21 inches long, and I can't remember if it was her or Orion. I know Maggie was 19 inches long, um, but she was a very healthy baby, and I remember her doctor just being like, <laughs> she has more hair than me. She was just born. I'm sad. <laughs> I thought you, I just I don't know why that is just the funniest thing to me, but uh, yeah. So that that's my birth story with Minna. Minna was always always a really quiet baby. She never really fussed for much. She didn't cry a whole lot. Um, after I had given birth to her, my sister reminded me last night actually, and we talked to Minna together. I Facetimed Minna on uh uphold on my ears doing something sorry i felt like my ear was trying to unclog <laughs> this is a pain in the butt y'all but uh yeah so after i had men i ended up having to stay in the hospital an extra two days not because anything was wrong but because i was in need of help with breastfeeding 
um, I was having issues with it. And Minna had what they call early teeth, which means her gums were extremely hard. So she would nurse, but then she would start gnawing on me. Like I was a, like a raw hide bone or something. And it started causing bleeding. And so the nurse wanted to come in to do a check to make sure. Like she put her finger in Minna's mouth and Minna like essentially bit her. And she was just like, ow. And then like Minna kind of gave that little newborn smile. And the lady was like, she's so cute. She's huge. And I'm like, yeah, she's, she's a couple of days old now. And they're like, most babies lose weight after uh, birth. Like, they'll lose a couple of ounces, and then, like, they'll gain some more weight. Minna never lost weight. So, by the time we took Minna home, she was 11 pounds. We had been in the hospital for five days. Um, and that was just because it was over the weekend, and the nurse didn't come back until that Monday morning. So, the, the lactation consultant came in. She, you know, gave me some tips and tricks on things I could do with Minna to help her feed better and uh, not chew on me, essentially. And so then they they released us and we drove the hour home. I don't think Minna's dad ever driven so slow in his entire life. Every little bump he would, is she okay? I'm like, she's fine. Just keep driving. Now take it, we're driving an hour home because I was in Harrisburg. And so we we're, we get back to the house here but oh i completely skipped over their part so like i don't know i don't think it was uh, it was hours after i had been a out like i'm talking about le legit hours because i had her well no it was the next morning it was the next morning that's why i was so early in the morning it was like eight o'clock in the morning the next day okay we hadn't had any visitors minna's dad had stayed at the hospital with me and the next morning at 8 a.m we hear a knock at the door and i was like it must be the nurse or something because they, you know, when you have a baby, they don't let you sleep. So uh, I thought it was the nurse coming in to check me again. And here comes my sister with a bag of McDonald's. And she's just like, where's my niece? And I was like, what the hell? Now, the sister I'm talking about is Auntie Jasmine. It's the one you guys got to meet in live. Um, she comes in with a bag of McDonald's out of nowhere. And she's just like, here, eat this. Where's my niece? And I'm like, she's, she's right there. Oh, look at her. And they're, she's like, how do you say her name? And I'm like, her name is Minna. She's like, oh. And I'm pretty sure she's the one that came up with Minna Minna. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure she looked at her and went, oh, Minna Minna. And so she was, my sister Jasmine was the first one to hold Minna. And she's like, dang, she's big. I'm like, she was nine pounds. Nine pounds. And she looks at Minna and she's like, she looks like she's already a few months old. I'm like, yes, she's just a big baby. And she's like, oh, look at all the pretty hair. She meant I had a head full of hair, curly hair, super curly hair. Like it was like spiral curly hair. Um, her hair was already down to her ears when I was, when she was born. I didn't have a whole lot of heartburn until like the end of the pregnancy. So like my, of course my mom uh, would tell me all the wives tales and everything about, you know, if you got heartburn, she's gonna have a lot of hair and you gotta do this and that. So my sister's just like, oh, she has a lot of hair, blah, blah, blah. So then like, of course, family came to visit. And after like all the visitations and everything were done, uh, after the five days was up, we did go finally home. And like I said, Dave, her dad drove extremely slow home just to make sure, you know, the bumps in the road didn't like harm her in any way. And we got home, we had a couple of visitors when we got back to our house, which, you know, where we lived, the only friends we had were his friends because I didn't know anybody yet. And uh, so a couple of his friends came, stopped by to see the baby. And he was really paranoid about people touching her. Like he would make, like he was that, that stereotypical first dad. Everybody wash your hands, put hand sanitizer on, make sure you got a clean shirt on, don't smoke before you look at her, uh, all that. Like he was super paranoid. And I, I, that's, you know, I, I appreciate him being that way because at first I was just like, you know, please don't touch my baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, they're okay to touch the baby as long as they do all these things. So he would like put everybody through the fifth degree and uh, surprisingly, everybody was happy to oblige him, I guess. And like they would come in, they would make sure that, you know, and they would make sure that they had on like fresh clothes and wash their hands and use hand sanitizer and everything else. And like his, his parents came up to see Mena and uh, they came to the hospital as well because this is their first grandchild. This was the first grandchild on his side of the family. Uh, by the time I had Minna, oh gosh, I think Minna was like 
the 10th or 11th grandchild on my parents' side. Like, I have older siblings. Dave, uh, is he has a younger sister. And that's it. Like, it's just him and his sister. But me, I have four brothers, two sisters. So, like, for me, I wasn't, like, the only one, you know, looking to have a kid here. So, this is their first grandchild. So, of course, they were all excited. So, they came over to visit and bring toys and stuff. And some of his family came up um, to see her. And Minna was just a real chill baby. And I remember when we first got home, we took her over to Walmart because we lived across the street from Walmart. Now, I have an obsession with Walmart, okay? As an adult, I have never lived more than five minutes from a Walmart, okay? So now, anytime we move, my one stipulation for moving is we have to be within five minutes of Walmart. And even moving where we did, this time, we're still... We're exactly five minutes from Walmart, which I don't even think, I think it takes us four minutes and 32 seconds. And I only know that because I record for Patreon during that time if I have to drive to Walmart. So I think it like takes four minutes and 32 seconds. So we can't move too much further than where we're at right now. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we lived down the, like we lived up a hill in some apartments and, uh, down the hill at the end of the hill was Walmart so we lived close to Walmart so we stopped by Walmart to get formula um just in case nursing didn't go well and we got some more diapers and stuff even though we had a wall of diapers from his family because they did throw us a baby shower um and so uh yeah so we go take her to Walmart I had to go to the bathroom and of course you guys know if you've ever had children going to the bathroom after you have a child is a whole event um, you even, you're even adorned with those sexy fishnet undies that they give you that are like five sizes too big and that pad that can go from the ruta to the tuta. And, uh, <laughs> so like going to the bathroom was a whole hot mess. And I, I just, I really had to go and I did, I couldn't wait to get home and I really didn't want to go cause I don't like going in public restrooms. So I was just like, well, I'm going to have to at this point because I can't hold it. So I had to go to the bathroom. I come out and some ladies like looking at uh, Minna and her dad standing there like giving her the death glare because he doesn't know who the lady is. She just kind of walked up and started trying to touch Minna. He asked her, you know, please don't touch her. She's a newborn. And lady, like I walk out right as she says, newborn? She looks like she's five months old. And his, his he looks at her and he's like, she's actually only five days old. She's just a big baby. Minna was like the Michelin man if you roasted him a little bit. <laughs> like she was a big old baby. Um, but yeah, Mena was a real chill baby. She 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 was obsessed with Dora the Explorer growing up, and like I remember when we potty trained her, uh, we gave her a pair of Dora the Explorer undies, and she never had any accidents. Like Mena never had any accidents when I was potty training her. She got her first pair of big girl undies, and I was like, "Don't make Dora cry. You have to keep her dry." And she's like, "Okay." And so like I remember when she went to church. They have something called Children's Sermon. And during Children's Sermon, Minna decided that she wanted to show Pastor Roth, which of course was the pastor of the church, she wanted to show him her Doras. Her not thinking anything of it being inappropriate to show your underwear to strangers, let alone your pastor. Um, right in the middle of Children's Sermon, he, you know, he asked them, like, usually asked them, she was a couple, like, she was at least, I think she was like 18 months old at this point. And he asked her, you know, hey, is there anything, did you have fun doing anything this weekend? And she goes, I got new Dora undies. And she lifts up her dress and shows him her Dora undies. And he like turns his face and blocks it with his hand. He's just like, oh, that's very nice. And she goes, mommy says not to get them wet or Dora will cry. So we're going to keep them dry. And he's like, that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> he looks, and of course he looks back at me and I'm just sitting there like, hey, Pastor Roth, how's it going? <laughs> Um, because <laughs> uh, Dave wanted Minna to be a uh, part of the church because him growing up, a big part of his life growing up was being part of his church. So he wanted to make sure Minna was as well, which I wanted her to, I wanted her to have religion. I just kind of wanted her to find it on her own. But, you know, I, at that point I had control over it, but not really because he, he was very adamant that he wanted his daughter to go to the church that he's been going to since he was a child. So I was like, all right, I just kind of gave in. I was like, all right. Now with my two youngest ones, 
uh, Mr. Coffee and I are, or Mr. Coffee wasn't religious whenever I met him. So I we're, we're in that let them figure out what they want to believe for themselves and then we'll guide them along the way uh, when it comes to like the religious part of things. Don't need advice on that. Don't have to comment on that. Please don't. Which by the way, speaking of commenting, here's an insert for that you guys might be interested in. Hey guys, uh, so today we are picking our winner of the giveaway for the Whip and Chat. Now, if you watched the Whip and Chat all the way through, you would have known that there was a secret giveaway hidden inside of the Whip and Chat. I also have two doggies. I'm not sure why they're laying back here, but they've decided to lay back here. But as you can see, today is July 5th. And so we are going to pick a winner for the giveaway. And again, this was the video. Whip and chat is too early for this chaos. Y'all, I was a hot mess that day, all day. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that link. We're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna scroll down here. And essentially all you had to do was comment on the video. I didn't give you any specifications on words or anything. So we're gonna go ahead and put that into our little URL thing there. And it says filter out du duplicate users, include replies to comments, because for some reason when people comment, they reply to other people's comments. So those are the only two that we have to really do. And then it's going to tell us how many comments we have. So let's see how many comments we have. We're up to 300. 357 unique commenters. So uh, good luck to you all. And sorry if I'm talking really loud. I have a bum ear today. So, Luminisa Pascas Ha. I live with my phone on silent with lights. <laughs> so, Luminisa, you are the proud new owner of a color-changing tumbler. So, thank you to everyone who entered. I greatly appreciate you guys and all the love you show my channel and my family. I can't thank you enough for that. So, back to the video. So, congratulations to our winner of last week. She has already claimed her prize. So congratulations to Luminessa. I like that name. We're gonna do another giveaway, cause that was fun. So this time, I think I'm gonna do two. I did one last week, I'm gonna do two this week. So there's gonna be two separate winners this week. You're each gonna get, uh, we're gonna do a, we're gonna let you choose because I have purple, blue, pink, whatever. Um, and whenever you claim your prize, you'll, get to choose what color you want but uh for this week's giveaway if you could name your if you had a daughter and can give her any name what would it be write your answer down in the comment section please do not put in that this is a giveaway do not write giveaway in the title or your comment will be deleted and you will be disqualified from being able to enter but i would like to know what you would name your daughter if you were to if you were to find out you were pregnant tomorrow with a, a child or your spouse was pregnant with a child and you could give your daughter one name what would it be since minna is a girl obviously we're going to go with girl so if you can give your daughter one name what would it be? What would her first name be? So write your answer down in the comment section and then next week we'll draw a winner for the tumblers. And like I said, I think we're gonna do two winners this time. So write your name and then we're gonna do the same thing. I will comment on your post on Monday and you're gonna be looking for a comment that says, winner, winner, chicken dinner, please contact me. You'll have to contact me through email, Instagram or Facebook. I usually can get to my email and Instagram a lot faster. Facebook has been acting kind of wonky and hasn't been telling me when I have messages. So just a heads up. But to enter the contest, all you have to do is tell me what you would name your daughter if you found out you were pregnant today or your spouse was pregnant today. What would your daughter's first name be? Um, and we're just going to leave it at that because I don't want it to get too convoluted. <laughs> so yeah, so Minna was a pretty happy baby. And I, I, I was very honored to have that be my first child because they just got crazier as the children went on. So <laughs> come back in February if you want to hear the story of my next born child. With actually, you'll hear Maggie's story in September because Maggie's birthday is coming up in September. And she'll be, I can't believe she's going to be nine. Y'all, look, listen. That girl, I'm telling you. All right, hold on. 
Oh my goodness, I can hear out of my ear. Jeez, um. So I've had my ear clogged all weekend, all weekend. Since Friday, my ears, or no, since Saturday, my ear's been clogged. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, my ear's been clogged. Today's Tuesday morning. And now I can actually hear out of my ear again. Thank goodness. Uh, that was so weird for the longest time. All right. So, uh, where was I? <laughs> oh, that feels funny. All right. But yeah, so that was the story of Minna. Today she turns 15. Um, I, I don't know where the time goes. When they tell you that time flies when you have children, they're not lying. I, I just thought that was something that parents told each other. Um, because they couldn't, like, grasp the concept. You never understand anything until it happens to you, really. And I never understood the concept of, uh, what they meant by time flies. And now I know. It's hard to believe that I have a 15-year-old. Um, it's already hard enough to believe for me. Like, I was struggling last year. I, mentally, I struggled hardcore when Orion turned 10. And I don't know why. Because I didn't struggle when Minna turned 10. I didn't struggle on any of Minna's birthdays, but for some reason, when Orion turned 10, I struggled hardcore for, I don't know, a week or two. And I'm starting to get through that now with Minna. Like, she turned 15, and me, my brain just went, not so much, hey, I'm old. It went, how did she turn 15? She was just a baby. And so, like, it's just, it's weird to me because I, I've, obviously, I've watched her grow up. And now she's gone from this little baby that loved tomatoes, Minna's favorite food was tomatoes, to now being a 15-year-old who's, like, obsessed with Starbucks. And so, which, by the way, thank you to everyone who sent her Starbucks gift cards for her birthday. I don't think she'll have trouble with Starbucks. Like, she'll have trouble getting there, obviously, because she doesn't live close like she does here. But I don't think she'll ever need Starbucks money until her next birthday. So, uh because essentially we had a few people send her Starbucks gift cards. So I would like to say thank you for that. Um, but she now has like a surplus of Starbucks gift cards where she can probably like have Starbucks for the longest time without running out. So I'm sure sure she's happy about that. But yeah, so that's the story of Minna. Uh, I can't believe, I, I just, I can't believe she's 15. Um, next up for birthdays is Maggie. Well, technically, in our house, next up is me, then Maggie, then Mr. Coffee, and then that's all the birthdays for the year. Mr. Coffee's birthday is last because his birthday's in November. Uh, my birthday is next month on the 23rd, which is August 23rd, and then uh, Magpie's birthday is on the 12th of September. So, yeah, birthdays in the house are usually a big deal, and even though she's not here, we still celebrate her birthday. So, like... You know, we'll still do, like, the cake and stuff and everything for her birthday, even though she's not here. Uh, she has plans this evening, so we'll probably call her this afternoon. Um, now, Minna's birthday was very special, not only because it was her birthday, but when her pap was alive, her pap's birthday was July 4th. And so is my oldest sister, Tisha. My, t my sister Tisha's birthday is July 4th as well. But my sister Tisha never lived close enough to us that we would celebrate with her. Like, she's... I think she's lived down south ever since Minna was a baby. So we never got to celebrate with her, but Minna would celebrate every year with her grandfather and they would do a birthday, like they would have their separate birthday celebrations. But then on the 5th of July, they would celebrate her pap and her birthday together. And that was always special to her pap. And so they continue that tradition today, uh, even till today, uh, they had a celebration for her birthday uh, yesterday, and she got to spend time with her dad's family and, you know, get birthday gifts, and they released balloons for her grandfather, which I thought was very nice that, you know, they still honor his birthday with the balloons. Um, so, yeah, so that is that is the Minna Minna story. Hopefully it wasn't too embarrassing for her if she watches this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she will and be rolling her eyes the entire time. Um so yeah, uh, that's Minna. So what has been going on around the house here? Just normal stuff. Um, Maggie, this weekend, uh, her little friend, Heaven, we call her Heaven. Um, I call her Heaven because she's an angel. Oh my God, this little girl's so cute. And she's just, 
she just loves Minna, or she loves Maggie, and she loves playing with Maggie, and she's so super nice to Maggie. Maggie now knows what it means to have a true friend, and I love it. The only thing that's making me sad is that the little girl is only over here temporarily. They live across the street, actually. Not too far from here, actually. So Maggie can still go play with her. She just can't play with her. Like, she can't go outside and go across the street here in front of the house to go play with her. She lives a couple houses behind where we currently live now. So Maggie can still go play with her, but she won't be as uh, available as she is now since she's, you know, she'll be back over at her old place here before school starts. But uh, they were outside Friday, and the little girl asked Maggie, you know, hey, do you want to ride my bike? Because Maggie's bike was in the garage, and for some reason she didn't come in and ask to ride it. She's been asking her dad to take her training wheels off for the longest time, and Mr. Coffee kept telling her no, she wasn't ready. And I was like, well, we won't know if she's ready unless we take them off. Because uh, our first year that we moved here, Orion hadn't ridden a bike without training wheels either. Well, we went to go pick him out a bike at Walmart that year. And by the time we left Walmart, he had learned how to ride the bike without training wheels. So uh, that was around the same time it is now, like three years ago. And here, three years ago, here's Maggie now learning how to ride a bike without training wheels. The little girl put her on the bike and just told her, keep your balance. And Maggie took off. And so now Maggie has extra mobility because she can ride a bike now, which is kind of scary because now she can ride a bike. And at this point, the only thing that keeps this child from running away is the wind. Her arch nemesis is the wind. It was really windy yesterday, but I did get a little video of her riding her bike without the training wheels. She's so proud of herself and she was all excited because she's like, everybody's so proud of me, mommy. I'm like, yes, everybody's proud of you when you do something really good. And she's like, I rode my bike without my training wheels. So Mr. Coffee had no choice but to, to go out and take the training wheels off her bike. And he had them on there in a way where she had to keep her balance anyway or the bike would lean horribly to one side, trying to teach her how to get her balance. Maggie didn't have the confidence to keep her balance on the bike so she would constantly try to like it, the bike the bike was constantly trying to topple over but all it took was her friend asking her one time to ride it to for her to get it and she was just gone and i was like now she's starting to catch on to things a lot quicker i'm learning she's reading faster she's able to ride her bike now i think that light switch has finally turned on the kids each have what i like to call this mental light switch and the light switch turns on uh, whenever their it's like their brain is into full nerd mode, as I call it. Which you can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm over here with Lumpy Space Princess. I'm pretty guys sure you guys are like, what the hell is she doing? Um. But she she's she's getting into that mode where she's catching on to things quicker. She's learning things a lot faster. And so I'm excited to see what she does in school this year. Uh, Maggie will be going to third grade. And I think I hinder her ability to do things because I still baby her. And I don't try to. It's just force of habit because she's my last child. And I know she's my last child because, one, I have my tubes tied. We have decided that we don't want any more children. We were going to try for our brother, for Orion. But then we didn't want to go through the hassle of having another kid and diapers and late nights and stuff like that even though all my kids slept through the night from the moment they came home from the hospital like I had very good sleepy babies um I never had a, any sleeping issues with any of my kids until like a few years ago Maggie had that couple of weeks of night terrors because of her medication change but other than that like my kids have never really had any huge sleeping problems but now that Orion's getting older uh, he's having issues with trying to, like, getting to sleep. So, uh, he's been taking, like, melatonin, I think it's called. Melanin is for, like, your skin pigment. Melatonin is to help you sleep. I had to keep reminding myself because I, I say them wrong. But, uh, yeah, but Orion was having troubles there sleeping for a little bit. So, we got him a, a natural sleeping aid, and now he's sleeping peacefully. Uh, a little too peacefully because even right now it's like 12 30 in the afternoon maggie's awake but he's not awake and he sleeps in late now which is great the only problem is maggie still gets up she doesn't get up early but she gets up a little bit earlier than he does and so she's up for a little bit and by the time he gets up she's ready to go outside and play like maggie's like i'm all about going outside playing having fun with my friends doing what i gotta do y'all you know I mean so yeah 
Which, speaking of that, she wanted to go play with her friend outside, but it looked like it would, it looks it looks like it wants to rain today. It's very overcast, and I was like, well, you gotta wait till I'm finished because if it starts raining, like I need to be able to put her bike back in the garage. And of course, now that she can ride her bike without training wheels, she's super excited, and all she wants to do is ride her bike. So like now it's let's make sure there's somebody's out there to watch her in case she gets you know. In case she falls or something like that, I, I don't like the kids to go outside by themselves, which is why I do the whole, uh, I, I tell them don't go outside by yourself. We don't want you to get kidnapped. So, you know, just make sure you got the buddy system. Essentially, we teach them the buddy system, which is why uh, if you were in live, I talked about this crazy lady that or crazy person, I should say, because I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but they obviously don't have children or sense common sense that God gave a turn up. Um, telling me that apparently telling me telling my children that they're going to get kidnapped will force them into a life of drugs and alcohol and so you would have seen that comment on my Instagram and again I don't think this person has children so they would never know and there's nothing worse than someone who doesn't have children trying to give you parenting advice and her telling me you know hey you your, your kids are going to be addicted to drugs and alcohol because you tell them that they're going to get kidnapped if they go outside. And I'm like, see, that's where you're not hearing what I said. I said, I tell them not to get kidnapped, don't talk to strangers, and that they, you know, need to make sure that they're outside with somebody and not by themselves. Well, I know people, and they've been really messed up by that. Well, that's the people you know. These ain't my kids. My kids ain't like that. Like, nah, they're, they're 10 and, they're 9 and 10, or they're 8 and 10. They're not turning the drugs at 8 and 10 because their mommy said that they're going to get kidnapped if they don't use the buddy system. Like, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm telling my children I don't want them to get kidnapped. I want them to be cautious when they go outside and uh, be so aware of their surroundings, not so much oblivious to everything because, you know, somebody on the Internet is super sensitive about me telling them this. Plus, last time I checked, these kids came out of my body, not yours, and you don't tell me what to do on my channel. So... Yeah, and apparently this person has been known to go around the community spreading her st or spreading their stupid opinions about things and being very rude to creators on this this platform and I don't appreciate it. So, um yeah, I'm not even going to give it the person the name that they chose cuz they're not worth being mentioned, but I just thought that was kind of funny that, you know, you don't have children or you know anything and you spend your time being nasty to people online and the reason that whole thing started was because she claimed I opened the book wrong and I was going to destroy the book and I was like that book is a collector's item so it's not like it's going to be handled much one and two I've never had anybody be so critical over a book now when you're on YouTube people will correct you and they are fast to correct you about any and everything if you say something wrong if you look the wrong way if your hand isn't doing the right motion if you're doing things different than them they will be quick to correct you and of all my time of YouTube I've been corrected on how I say things how I do things and normally I just ignore people when they do that so just know that you know if you try to if it's very if it's actual criticism like hey Miss Coffee I think you could do better if you do this all right thank you I appreciate it but if it's like you're not saying that word right I will completely ignore what you're saying I will tell you okay but I will completely ignore what you're saying because one not everybody says the same things the same way and two like I will mess up a word here and there but I still struggle with my speech so like I still have times where I slur words and stuff and for those folks because I did have someone ask me do I drink because they heard me slurring my words in one of my videos and I was like I'm sorry I suffered a stroke and it still causes me to have speech issues so I'm really self-conscious about the way I speak about things but people will be quick to correct you on everything on this platform and that's fine because most of the time I can just ignore it but when you start talking about my kids yeah look listen now what we're not going to do is talk about people's kids so that's one way to get blessed out by Miss Coffee so don't don't do that don't be a crazy person like this person was. Um, they quickly got blocked from the channel, and now they can just join the Player Haters Club. So, like, <laughs> so that thumbs down you probably see on this video if you see it, uh, if there is one. It's probably from that person because, yeah, they're a moron. Anyways, so the weekend, essentially, we went out and got dinner, and we hung out. Like, I, Mr. Coffee's been feeling a little neglected up in the front room because whenever everybody hangs out we all hang out back here in the craft room because this is where it's at like everybody can come back here pick a craft to do sit down craft play cards do whatever this is like the gaming room essentially but he has like his tv and his games up front but nobody tends to hang up up 
hang out up there with him. So he was feeling a little neglected. So Saturday, I didn't do any crafting. I just went and sat with Mr. Coffee. Mostly slept, but I, I tried to hang out with him, but I was bored, so I fell asleep. <laughs> and then when I woke up, like we sat up and talked for a little bit. We were fussing, what was it? We were fussing one of these days about something. I don't remember what we were fussing about. And that's not to say that um, whatever it was wasn't important. It's just, I don't have the best short-term memory. So like, we were fussing about something and I was just kind of like, um, I don't remember what we're fussing about, but I remember I'm mad at you about something. <laughs> so, but don't worry, we're fine, we're fine. We, we talk it out. Sometimes it takes us some time and we have to give each other space, um, especially with me, with, with being bipolar, whenever I get into it with my husband, oh, I got a bunch of diamonds that I apparently spilled out all over the place. I wish I had the cap for this. Does anybody know if uh, she made a top for this one? Because I really like to get a top for this one. I know she sells the tops to her, uh, and I'm flinging diamonds everywhere. I know she sells the top to her trays. I would like to get a top for this one because that's one of the only things I don't like about it is that when you try to put the diamonds in because it's such a wide tray, they kind of spit out everywhere and you get diamonds like literally like everywhere like this one right here anyways so yeah so uh i spent saturday hanging out with mr coffee and then i spent sunday sunday we i think we just sat around playing cards all day to be honest like i don't think we did anything too tremendous uh we did even though we don't celebrate fourth of july i have my reasoning please don't ask um because yeah, I just, I don't feel like going through this again. I just went through this with another subscriber and I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Like people keep asking and they don't really want the answer, but I, I'm not one to celebrate the 4th of July. It's not, that doesn't mean that I'm not American or I don't like being an American. It's just, I don't celebrate the holiday. Um, but I, uh, we did take the kids to go see the fireworks. Um, my dogs aren't really affected too much by the fireworks. Daisy, she doesn't, she's not scared. She just hates the noise. Like it gets, like the first couple of times she's like, oh look, fireworks. And then after like, I don't know, after an hour or so, she's just over it. So she'll just go find a hole to sit in and she'll go sit somewhere. Um, I thought I was out of 3865 for a second there. It's like, it's kind of early in the canvas to be out of diamonds already. But Killian, he has zero Fs to give, okay? Zero Fs. He doesn't care about fireworks. He sat here in the same spot, belly up, all night. Um, Killian has also decided that he's he's taking control of his own life. And he will be, from now on, walking himself. So, I don't walk my dogs off lead or off leash too often because they're not trained to do so. Um, which, hold on, because I think I have... I, in my little drawer over here, I have a whole thing of t Moss drills. And I want to say I have 38.65 in round, I think. Alright, I have a couple of 38.65s. And because I only have a couple, I'm just going to mix them in. So if you've never seen me mix diamonds, this is how I do my, my enhancements. I don't know where they're going. They're just going in there somewhere. I'm going to order some more... Uh, I wonder if t Ma. I, I'm pretty sure she offers a pack of all the diamonds that she has. I need to order a whole pack of what she has. So I'm going to I'm gonna contact her after I'm done to see if I can get a pack of what she has. Like, uh, ultimate collection of all the AB diamonds that she has. That way, I don't have to worry about if I have a diamond or not. And I didn't think about it until just now because I was like, there's a lot of white on here. I would like to add some, like, ABs to that. So... I'll have to go check with T-Mall. There's also another company out there that I, uh, they contacted me, but I didn't like the way that they contacted me and they came at me. So I was just kind of like, I would, I'm just going to buy some diamonds at some point and then like, you know, order them from you and see how the quality and stuff is. But I never got around to ordering them. So I need to, um, I'm gonna, maybe I'll check out this other site that has AB diamonds. I know uh, Diamond Drills USA carries uh, diamonds as well. Uh, as well as wax, because that's usually where I get my blue wax from. So, like, right now I'm using blue wax from Diamond Drills USA. Um, and I'll link everything down in the description box, because I know somebody's going to ask where I got the pen or where I got my tray. So I'll make sure to link everything. So if you have any questions about what I'm using in the video, I will have it linked. I also found out that I can do voiceover videos. So, you guys, look, listen. 
Miss Coffee would like to start drawing on the channel. What do you guys think? Honest opinions, not just Miss Coffee, I'll watch anything you put up. Honest opinions. Do you guys are you guys interested in seeing drawing? Now, usually I would just do what I want to do. And I know I'm going to get a lot of that comment. Do what you want to do. But I thought about doing drawings and voiceovers once a week. Not right now. I do have a, a book coming that I was asked to review for a company. And the book I picked was a sketchbook. So uh, I would probably start it with that video. But uh, I, I want to start drawing on the channel. Because you guys know I love, I've been like learning to, I've been teaching myself to draw and I really want to show you guys like my process and eventually get to a point where essentially you guys get to watch my art grow and see how I go from not knowing what the hell I'm doing to hopefully one day I might know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I would like to start drawing on the channel. So if you would be, if, if that's something you think that you'd be interested in seeing, just say, sure, start drawing. If not, just be like, that's not something I'm really into. And it's okay. It won't hurt my feelings. I just want to know what your guys' honest opinion is because I didn't know if I should start another channel just for my artwork or if I should just do it on this channel since it's already established, which I don't care about starting another channel. That's just whatever. Like it wouldn't be post every day to be post like once or twice a week, but yeah, I want to start drawing on the channel with my tablet and pen and paper. And they won't be tutorials, so they're, they're not going to be tutorials because I have no clue what the hell I'm doing, okay? Um, it takes me twice as long to learn things, when, it, especially when it comes to stuff that deals with color because obviously I'm colorblind. But, like, I would just really like to start drawing on the channel because it's something that I enjoy doing. And because I learned that I can figure, I figured out how to do voiceovers, I can do like, you know, part time lapse, part talking. And like, I could tell a story voiceover over my videos and I thought that would be really cool. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, I thought about doing it with my diamond painting, but I was like, no, because I'm used to talking the entire time I'm diamond painting. I don't wanna just not diamond paint <laughs> and have it turn into a time lapse. You guys right now are getting a lot of time lapses, but Bling Bling Bear should be done next week. Paint with numbers should be done probably by middle of next month because I only work on it one day a week. So yeah, what I could do is time lapse it over the course of a couple of days and get one row done, but it's still like gonna take me a couple of, you know, whatever to get it finished. But yeah, so let me guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, don't forget to enter in for the giveaway. Again, don't write the word giveaway, just write what the name and you can tell me why you chose a name or you can just put the name uh we're gonna do two draw drawings this time so we're gonna do uh each person will win will win a tumbler and the tumbler will have one of my catchphrases and my emoji girl on it um you get to pick the color of your tumbler and i'll tell you the colors once i you know contact you to collect your prize so there's that but with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed the whipping chat this week. And I should probably get out of here because Orion should be getting up soon, hopefully. If he's not, I need to go check on him. Because <laughs> he's been sleeping in a lot. But I think he's just kind of hanging out in his room right now because he just does like to sit there and lay in bed. Which who doesn't like to lay in bed after you wake up? Like who gets right up out of bed? I'm not a get up right out of bed person. Um, question of the video. When you wake up in the morning, do you sit in bed for a few minutes and like wake up? Or do you just hop right out of bed and get on with your day? Because I'm I'm a lingerer, okay? I linger in bed for a good 20, 30 minutes before I actually get out of bed. I'll even get up to go to the bathroom and then get back into bed. Um, I don't want to start my day. I don't like the start of the day. I like I don't like the end of the day either. <laughs> but I really don't like the start of a day. So I will like procrastinate in bed for a little bit. So are you a lingerer or are you a pop up and go? So let me know that down in the comments. You guys have a lot to comment and I hope to see, I, I love reading you guys' comments. You guys are hilarious and you guys are very informative sometimes too. Like I don't think y'all know how much you guys help me, especially when it comes to taking care of these kids and this household. So I just, y'all are the real MVPs for real. Like thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming and watching my videos and everything else. I, I really appreciate it. But with that said, folks, I got to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those down in the comment section below. And I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. But with that said, now that I'm going off camera again. <laughs> but with that said, folks, 
Uh, again, if you're new to the channel and like to see more random crazy videos just like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. I don't remember where I got my nails, okay? Um, I have nails coming from Mysteria Diamonds and I'm gonna do a whole how do I apply my nails video with her nails. Um, she just recently opened up an Etsy shop and if I can find it, which I'm pretty sure I can, I will link it down in the description box. You guys go show your love to Mysteria Diamonds and go pick up some fancy nails and I will have a video on her nails coming up here soon. Uh, probably in a week because I'm gonna give, give these a week and then I'm gonna take them off. So thank you guys again so much for watching. All your questions and comments down in the comments section. If you're new, you know what to do. Subscribe, hit the bell, cost you zero dollars. With that said, I gotta get out of here. Thank you again so much for watching. Remember to stay safe out here in these crafty streets. So please remember to wear your mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your six feet, and always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye, guys.